What is going on everybody? Another episode of 4x4 Camping and Adventures and in today's episode I have loaded up 1300Ks already onto the Y62 Patrol and um, I want to give you my first thoughts, opinions, um, do I regret anything, is there anything that bothers me on the car and uh, a few new mods that have actually been done to the car like the rims so I'm going to go through that in this video so uh, without further ado let's get into it. So here we are, new rims on the car. Um, let me tell you about them. 18 by 9 is the uh, rim size. Uh, they're a plus 30 offset, so um, they do stick out a little bit further than standard rims, um, which I believe are a 45 or something off the top of my head. But anyway, they do stick out a little bit further than the standard rims, um, but they don't come out as far as the uh, tread's going to pretty much come out the side of the, um, the guard. Now, I could have gone... Um, Allied, I could have gone Dirty Life or Fuel Rims, but I didn't really want to go those particular brands because they're all a plus 18 offsets. So they do stick out quite far. Then you've got the flares on, it's just extra stuff that I didn't really want to have to worry about, um, especially just changing over rims. So um, yeah, these pretty much fit perfectly in the, um, in the guard. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the rims. So it's an ROH, Australian brand, Australian designed and Australian made rims. That's a big important factor that I'm going to get into a little bit later in the video. And I actually approach ROH. So before all transparency, I was going to buy these rims if ROH didn't come to the party, no matter what, because I really like the actual design of this rim. Now, ROH did come to the party, and uh, they gave me a great price on these rims. So I spent my own money, bought them. I did get a cheaper price than you would get from your Ty Powers and your Bob Jane and all that kind of stuff going directly through ROH. But uh, I can't obviously give you that price because that would be a massive detriment to ROH's uh, business. But um, it definitely was cheaper than um, I think your 330 bucks you get from uh, Bob Jane and Ty Power and that kind of stuff. Roughly before, um, when I was doing my calculations on pricing and mods and that kind of stuff, these were around about two grand for five because obviously you've got the spare as well. It was about two grand roughly off the top of my head, getting a few quotes from a few places. So if you like this particular rim or if you like this, you know, this look um, and you've got a Y62 Patrol and you want this actual size, uh, it's going to be about two grand roughly off the top of my head. I'm super happy with my purchase. I absolutely love these and uh, I reckon they're a great looking rim. I really think it really offsets the car, makes it look uh, less like a mum mobile. But um, no, I'm super happy with them. So um, thanks ROH for obviously looking after me with the price. But, um, but yeah, super happy with my rim choice. Now uh, let's move on from rims. Let's go to, um, I suppose, my next mod on this vehicle that's going to be, um, be done. And uh, I want to talk a few th different things that I've um, didn't really divulge into the original video because I only just bought the car at that point. But um, as I said, 1300Ks. I'm going to talk a few little things about... Uh, what I like, what I don't like about the car and all that kind of stuff. So uh, let's get into that. All right, here we go. Let's go through uh, what I like, what I don't like about the car. Um, and then I'll go into my next mods on the vehicle. What I like about it, the size, um, space in it is huge. Um, I went down to Black Label Storage um, in Rocco and we sort of looked at the car and that kind of stuff. And just sort of, because obviously it's on paper, then we sort of looked at the back of the car and uh, started putting things into process but um yeah we it's definitely easier to see how it's all going to be set up once it's obviously you know there in front of you and you've got everything in front of you so it definitely makes it a little bit easier but um the size of it's awesome so the boot in these things is absolutely massive so i think it's like 1400 liters when you got the back seats down so it's huge uh, when i'm talking about the back back seats because it's a seven seater obviously now um things i don't like about it uh, I'm not a big fan of the handbrake. So the handbrake is a push handbrake with your foot. Um, I always forget about it because I'm so used to pulling the handbrake up. I probably will get used to it, but um, it's a bit of a pain in the butt. But, uh, you know, it's a small thing. You know, it's not a huge thing, but, you know, every time you park up, you sort of got to do that movement with your foot. It's a bit annoying, and then you forget about it when you drive off again because then you have to push it out. So a little bit how you're going, but, yeah, not, 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 you know, not a big thing, but just something that bugged me. Uh, and probably the other thing is going from my Trident to this is all the little buzzing and noises and that kind of stuff that these new cars do. So it's not too bad. I mean, nothing really to write home about, you know, a few noises and that kind of stuff, but um, it is what it is. Uh, I'm not really used to it, but yeah, it can become annoying, but uh, you know, not a huge thing. Um, fuel economy actually is not as bad as I thought. So at the moment, um, I'm on my second tank. So as I said, I've done about 1300 Ks. 
I went through the first tank in about 600 k's, but um, I was driving it uh, like a V8, if that's probably the best way of explaining it. Um, but the second tank, I was like, well, you know, I'm going to see what I can get out of it. And I'm currently at about 650 k's on the trip meter. Um, I'm just under a um, half a tank. So I reckon I'll probably get about 900 k's out of this tank. And that's been a mixture of um, highway, uh, probably about 100-ish, 100 k's of that's probably around town. Maybe not 100 k's, maybe 70 k's is around town. Um, the rest has been highway. So um, went down with the family down to, um, uh, where did we go? Went down to Darden up and that kind of stuff and uh, had a bit of a look down there and uh, went down to Dwelling Up as well, had a bit of a look down there. And uh, we're gonna to go to Augusta this weekend just to um, have a bit of a camp. But, uh, but yeah, it's been actually pretty good on fuel. It's averaging 12.6 12 it was on the um, screen last time I looked at it. So that's not too bad. Uh, I thought these use a shitload of fuel and that's what everyone kept saying to me. They said, oh, it's gonna use heaps of fuel. But 12.6 and I'm, you know, just on 600 Ks at half a tank. That's not too bad, I don't think. So, I, should, I mean, they say you get about 900 k's out of these, so that's probably about right. Um, you know, with obviously a lot of highway driving and that kind of thing. So that seems about right. So it's, I reckon it's pretty good. So um, definitely the, the whole myth about, you know, these things using a lot of fuel. I mean, if you drive it like a V8 is going to, obviously you probably only get about 600 k's out of a tank if you're flogging it everywhere. But uh, if you drive it like a normal car, they're actually not too bad. So, you know, food for thought. Um, but that's pretty much about it that bothers me on the car. I mean, it's an, it's an awesome car to drive. It's so comfortable. Like, it's so easy to drive. And that was one of the big things about going the Trident of this is touring. Um, you do feel when you're, when you're at the other destination with the Trident, you can feel a bit how you're going in the seat because they're not the most comfortable seats in the world. But uh, in this, we've, we've done heaps of Ks and it's, you know, hasn't really bothered me. And I do a lot of Ks for work. So it hasn't really bothered me at all. It's been awesome. So... Um, I suppose next big thing um, for this is I probably want to go through the next mods that's going to happen to it. So there's going to be a fair few things that is going to be happening to it over the next sort of couple of months. Um, but I want to sort of talk about the next thing that's actually going to happen to it uh, in the next week or so. So uh, let's get into that. Well, as you can see, I'm on the passenger side of the car now. Um, and you can see this guy here. Nothing special. It's just a mirror. Uh, but what's actually going to happen is because I haven't got the ball bar yet and the ball bar is not rocking up until about January because there's a huge huge uh, waiting list and that kind of stuff for the, uh, the bull bar to get made and that kind of thing, but that is what it is, I can't do much about that. But I want to install my GME 2A Aerial, so another brand, um, another Australian brand, Australian made, Australian designed and uh, Australian company. So as I said, you're getting a bit of a theme here um, with what I'm putting on the car. But I saw um, it was Vogue Industries and they were talking about doing this, um, it's actually a two-way antenna bracket that goes here. So essentially this piece here comes out by another couple of mil and the whole thing is pretty much um, like a bracket. You can actually mount a two-way aerial. I'll put up a, um, a photo on the YouTube story, but it sort of sticks here and it sort of sits about that high, but it doesn't impede your vision. So, um, so I had a look at those and they were 89 bucks. I think it was 100 and, 104 bucks delivered to where I am in WA. And uh, it's just, as I said, it's a nice, easy way to mount a two-way aerial if you don't want to put a bull bar on these, but um, well, once I get the ball bar, obviously, I may remount it, just depending, where I might just got to keep the clean look at the front. But, um, but yeah, I'm going to put the two-way here. Um, the aerial comes out there, and then it's going to be nice and easy to run the wires into the dash. So nice and simple, don't have to go through engine bays. And it should look super neat. So, um, so I'll do that mod, I'll do that myself, because um, that should be pretty easy to do. Just take the mirror off, and you're pretty much ready to rock and roll. And, uh, yeah, I'll install the two-way, and, uh, yeah, see how she goes. But um, that'll be a cool little thing. And actually yesterday, um, my Airbag Man kit came, so um, another Australian company. So Airbag Man, um, who I've dealt with for a long, long time, and I had their gear on my um, Trident, never missed a beat, it was bloody good gear, and um, the quality from those guys, the service from those guys, Jacob and Benny do such a good job um, of looking after you, and that's why I went back. So now, with the new um, airbags that are going to go on the rear of this, um, we've got the Kevlar bags that are going to go into the coil, or they're, they're coil assist bags. Um, and it's going to have an onboard air system as well. I've got the tank, um, and also, I'll be able to uh, pretty much adjust the rear airbags on the fly with a wireless remote. So that'll be um, something new and different. But uh, yeah, essentially I can actually adjust it on the fly with a remote. So you can actually stand outside. If you put a caravan or a camper trailer on the back and obviously it takes a little bit of load on with the um, ball weight, 
you can actually adjust it back up to, um, to, to you know, back to stock heights and not even play with switches and not even get out of the car. Not even really uh, worry about it. Just stand there and press your button and psh, she up she goes. So uh, yeah, I'll have to get that installed. I was gonna install it myself, but um, it's quite a complex kit and uh, I might just get someone to install that for me, but uh, I'll probably get everything mounted, but then just get them to do the wiring and that kind of stuff because um, yeah, there's a fair bit going on with it. Um, I'll go to like a qualified installer that does all the airbag man stuff and, um, and use them. But, um, but I did all the stuff in the Trident myself, but uh, that was a lot more of a basic setup. That was just like your standard onboard air compressor with a bunch of switches. But um, yeah, this one's a little bit more tricky and a lot more electronics. So um, probably a little bit over my head, but uh, yeah, I'll get that installed. And um, yeah, obviously do a bit of a video on it and talk to you guys about how it all works and that kind of stuff. All right, so you're probably getting a bit of a theme here. Australian owned companies. What I wanted to do is um, support as many Australian-owned companies as I could, especially with 2020 being the way it was. Um, yeah, I didn't really want to throw any money overseas or anything that I could put onto it that I couldn't, um, you know, didn't have to throw overseas. Happy days. That's why I went with ROH. That's why I went with Airbag Man. That's why I went with the Black Label System uh, in Rockingham. So that's a WA-owned company. Um, and I really wanted to make sure, oh, sorry, GME as well, another Australian-owned company. Um, I really wanted to make sure that I was supporting as much Australian-owned companies as I physically could. So Australian-owned, Australian-designed, and Australian-manufactured is a big, big part of uh, what I'm putting on this vehicle. So Vogue, again, Melbourne, uh, sorry, not Melbourne, Queensland-based company, um, Somerville Metalworks. Um, so I've been speaking to uh, a chap named Rory, and uh, we're looking at doing a bit of a custom setup in the back for my uh, cargo barrier. And uh, also, um, what are they called? The uh, portable travel buddies, whatever they're called, um, is going to be in the back as well. Um, he also makes little trays and that kind of stuff for him. So I'll put a bit of a link in the description for him because he makes all the trays and that kind of stuff. And um, he's a one man operation, so uh, he can make custom stuff as well. But the cargo barrier is going to be pretty cool. We're actually going to mount the uh, travel buddy in the cargo barrier. And uh, it's going to have a hatch in there as well so I can access the back if I need to. So um, another Australian owned company, Australian made, Australian manufactured, happy days. If you can do whatever you can to um, support Australian companies, I say get on it. If you can, um, you know, put, I know, so, I know some Australian companies don't support certain vehicles. Like I know not many people make bull bars for this car. So the bull bar isn't unfortunately going to be a um, Australian made bull bar, but um, you know, that's just the way it is. I can't. I can't, you know, get someone to custom make something. This thing's got radars and cameras and all the other stuff in it. So it does need to be um, all certified and that kind of stuff to go on the car. So look, there are some things that are gonna be on the car that aren't, uh, you know, Australian made, but um, I guarantee you 90% of the stuff is definitely gonna be Australian made, Australian owned, and they come from an Australian company. So uh, I'm really excited about that. Oh, another thing, Super Peg, the uh, 180 degrees warning, I've kept that, that's gonna be on the car as well. So that's another Australian um, owned company here in Queensland. So, um, so yeah, as I said, as many Australian companies as I can, I'm gonna support as hard as I can. Um, Jimmy from Grab My Gear, I'll be uh, getting some more of his bags. Again, WA owned company. Um, he, always, he does awesome work and uh, yeah, I'll be getting some more stuff for when the drawers go in, um, just so I can organize everything and all that kind of thing. So as I said, big theme of the uh, build, Australian owned companies, get behind it. But uh, look, I think that's another video. I've rambled on long enough. Um, you probably just want to see cool mods going onto it. So I've done the rims. That's, you know, here, that's, that's neither here nor there, but uh, I'll do the aerial next and then uh, roof rack and sliders is going to go on. And then uh, I want to do a bit of a video with a chap named Graham. He has a YouTube channel as well. I'll link at that also in the description. We're going to do a 200 versus Y62 video. He's got a pretty stock 200. I've got a pretty stock Y62 and we're going to go uh, do some tracks to the exact same trails and uh, see who comes out the best. So that'll be an interesting video coming up in the future. And I spoke to Wayne the other day. We're going to do a bit of video uh, with me and Wayne and uh, another chap called Mitch, which is going to be another challenge video. Mitch's big GU um, that's on like 35 inch tires and flex for days uh, versus Wayne's monster truck of a uh, 79 series. So um, that'll be an interesting one to uh, come up and see in the, in the near future. It's coming up in the next couple of months anyway. But anyway, that's another episode of 4x4 Camping and Adventures. Thank you for watching this video. If I don't see you out there on the tracks and trails, I might see you in the next video. If I don't see you in the next video, I shall see you later. Like and subscribe, do all that cool stuff, and I'm out of here. See you later.